Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, Isabel Dos Santos, Africa's richest woman, says that Bruce Lee's signature appeared on forged documents that she claims the Angolan government used to get her assets frozen last year. The billionaire daughter of Angola's former president denies corruption allegations. Also, in the urgent bid to source equipment and expertise to tackle coronavirus in Africa, Ethiopia's one ventilator specialist races to train as many of his colleagues as possible. We take a closer look. And since schools were closed in mid-March, many Ivorian students have turned to distance learning, but that brings its own problems as poorer communities struggle with shoddy internet connections. But first, the woman suspected as being Africa's richest has accused Angola of using forged evidence to get her bank accounts frozen. Isabel Dos Santos is the daughter of the country's ex-president, Jose Eduardo Dos Santos. She's accused of having skimmed off over a billion dollars from state companies. She's always denied this and says that she's being set up. Regional correspondent Jane Flanagan tells us more. Well, the statements in the... Uh the evidence that she's put out today are absolutely typical of what we've seen from Isabel dos Santos since the very first day when allegations surfaced against her. She uh, doesn't shy away from this label that she's Africa's richest woman, but she certainly uh, resents any charge that she has built her empire and her vast wealth through anything other than hard work. Even as evidence has flooded in against her, you will recall early this year, there was a huge cache of leaked emails, known, which became known as the Luanda leaks, which seemed to set out this very complicated web of business interests and connections uh, through uh, uh, and buying up of, of state entities on the cheap that linked her and her husband to wrongdoing. And she has absolutely even though the 77,000 documents which seem to be a rather a smoking gun Isabel dos Santos is having no truck with it and she is going to fight authorities in Portugal and Angola all the way whether she comes out herself as a political candidate to challenge President Lorenzo Lorenzo is something that she certainly hasn't ruled out and I think that would be a very intriguing development if that's the way she decides to go and to fight to clear her name eventually. Jane Flanagan there. Now, critics of Uganda's leader have accused him of manoeuvring to try and take advantage of the coronavirus pandemic to try and cement his grip on power. 75-year-old Yari Museveni, who has been in power since 1986, has his opponents worried after saying this week that it would be madness to go forward with elections planned for next year. The country has only had 121 cases of COVID-19 and no deaths, after Ms. Evany brought in some of the strictest lockdowns on the continent to stem the spread of the pandemic. And the US says that it is donating up to 1,000 ventilators to South Africa to help its response to COVID-19. With over 11,300 cases and 206 deaths, the country has the highest official infection rate on the continent. Western Cape has been identified as a particular hotspot for the virus. It has the highest number of positive cases in the country, over 50%. Tuesday marked International Nurses' Day, and health workers in the city of Cape Town demonstrated outside of Tigerberg Hospital against the lack of PPE, or personal protective equipment. The rallies were held after a nurse who worked at the site died last week after contracting coronavirus. In the urgent bid to source equipment and expertise needed to tackle cases of coronavirus in Africa, Ethiopia's one ventilator specialist is racing to train as many of his colleagues as he can. So far, the country has faced more than 250 cases of the disease. However, that number does come after a doubling in logged infections over the previous eight days. Nicolas Schumann has more. Ethiopia, which has more than 100 million inhabitants, has a total of 435 hospital mechanical ventilators. They are needed for the patients with the most serious cases of COVID-19. The government says 800 health professionals can operate the ventilators, but the country has only one specialist in this area, Habtamu Kehali, who is training as many people as possible as the virus spreads. Putting tubes into the patient's windpipes to push air from a ventilator into their lungs is not easy. If they are not properly uh, applied to the patients, 
the, you know, the risk may be more than the benefit, by the way. So, um, but I know. So when we go to uh, each hospital, uh, we can see that from the trainings, we can see that there is a significant gap uh, in the, uh, you know, in the application, the clinical applications of these missions. Normally, Kihali gives one-week courses, but because of COVID-19, in order to train as many people as possible, he has condensed it into two days of work. Since March, Kehali has already trained 78 health workers. According to the World Health Organization, around 5% of COVID-19 infections are severe enough to require intensive care and mechanical ventilation. Sudan's rejected Ethiopia's plans to move forward with filling in Ethiopia's Grand Renaissance Dam. Since 2011, the mega hydroelectric project on the Blue Nile River has caused deep divisions between some of the countries that depend on its waters. Addis says the giant reservoir is crucial to its economy, but Khartoum and Cairo are worried that their shares of the water will be affected. There have been several rounds of talks between the three nations. Sudan's Prime Minister said that he will not be signing an agreement to start filling in the site in July and that there are still technical and legal sticking points to unravel. Well, since the closing of schools in mid-March, many Ivorian students have turned to distance learning to keep up with their studies. But that can bring its own problems. Poorer communities struggle with shoddy internet connections and limited access to digital learning platforms. Our team met one student determined to keep on course despite the hurdles. Abobo is one of Abidjan's poorest districts, a densely packed home to 1.5 million people, including Jean-Jacques, who grew up here. A gifted student, he won a scholarship to join one of the most prestigious pre-university programs in the country. Au début, j'étais sceptique et je croyais que c'était une école d'enfants des riches. Before Ivorian schools were closed, he was a boarding student at the French high school, but has since been forced to return home, relying on online classes for his education. Jean-Jacques and his family of 10 lives in a three-room building. He has had to adapt. L'espace pour étudier Bon, au début, on ne trouvait pas d'espace, on ne savait pas comment se placer pour étudier. Comment, comment, comment Nous avons aussi euh, un problème de connexion. His family bent over backwards to allow him to continue studying for university entrance exams. Personne ne fait de bruit. Voilà, quand il a passé à table, personne ne va vers cet endroit pour voir aller jouer ou quoi. C'est que Jean-Jacques est en train d'étudier. Quand il a fini, il peut passer maintenant au jeu aux causeries de la famille. C'est comme ça, tout le monde le respecte. Jean-Jacques' scholarship program is provided by the French high school in Abidjan. The organizers are making special efforts to mitigate for the effects of social inequality during this crisis. À peu près la moitié des élèves nous ont contacté en disant pour nous c'est difficile de, de pouvoir se, se connecter, on n'a pas de crédit internet et donc l'association gestionnaire a, a fourni en fait euh, du crédit. According to the World Bank, only one in three Ivorian children finishes middle school. The closing of education facilities for nearly two months now will not help improve those odds. And finally, Netflix is adding a Zimbabwean movie to its film listings. The online streaming service has picked up Cook Off for release later this year. It's produced by Joe Jaju. It's about a single mum who turns up the heat on her dreams after she's entered into a TV cooking competition. Have a look. So, we're looking for 16 chefs to take part in the new season of Battle of the Chefs. You should enter, Mom. I, I really think you could win. This is for professional chefs. I wouldn't stand a chance. What is it? We've entered you into the cooking competition. What? Over the next 10 weeks, we'll be eliminating the weakest each week. Really good, Mom. Go big or go home. Are you ready for this? I'm going to kick your butt. I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm afraid you're not cut up. We all agree. Only professional chefs have ever made it past the second round. I hope there's nothing too experimental in this dish, because you know we like ourselves the way we like it. 
tasty looking stuff. Well, Cook Off was released in January 2018 and picked up several awards at this year's Cannes Film Festival. It's worth sampling if you can. Well, that's it for Iron Africa. Thanks very much for joining us. Do so again if you can. Take care.